the Caribbean is making a bid to establish a bigger footprint in the global fish trade. From tuna to conch, from shrimp to smoked fish. It's a tiny footprint, estimated at less than 1% of global trade. But in meeting European Union food safety standards, acknowledged as the most stringent worldwide, the region is hoping to increase market access beyond European tables and across the globe. And we export yellowfin tuna and um, big eye tuna to the United States, fresh tuna. Uh, we do some mai mai, we have a lot. And uh, we do some smoked fish. Uh, many varieties, uh, same yellowfin tuna, um, Atlantic sailfish, which we call locally ocean gar. And from the ocean gar, we develop a product we call the bacon of the sea as a substitute or supplement to the real bacon. Developed countries, the EU, the United States, Canada, they all have standards that you must meet in order to export to their market. Uh, in our countries, we may not meet all those standards currently. And so we want to put in place the systems, which are quite complicated, uh, to be able to enter those markets to satisfy their requirements so that, so, so, so that our products can be exported. And wide range of products, not only a few products. So we want to make sure that all our fish and seafood, aquaculture, marine fish, etc., are able to be traded internationally because there are tremendous opportunities and benefits, economic benefits. Yes, you may mail them to me. Okay. Dr. George Grant, a Jamaican veterinary expert, and Chris Headley, a British legal consultant, have been moving through the region holding national consultations in select Caribbean countries for the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism. The European Union program for providing technical assistance in sanitary and phytosanitary measures, or SPS, is hoping to give the Cariform region the technical help they need to get more Caribbean fish and seafood on European tables. Dr. Grant says in most countries, these standards are voluntary rather than mandatory making it difficult for the region to trade in the European Union under its economic partnership agreement. If you have not met the stringent regulation and standards, you cannot export your products on the global marketplace. And it is the marketplace that is more lucrative for most of the niche products that they have in the Cariform countries. So they will be missing a market that is lucrative. Dr. Grant says reversing the situation has to be led by the government with support from the private sector. And firstly, the government, uh, what they're looking at is, is country approval. The country in that sense leads the way. Once there's country approval by the, comp the country undertaking those roles that are its prerogative, such as putting in place the legislative uh, 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 underpinning the regulatory and monitoring systems, then the private sector follows through by having their facilities, which means processing facilities, vessels in order, right? But to, to underpin the support that the government has put in place by having gotten country approval. There is not much interest right now because we are still exporting whatever we get to Asia or, the, or to the United States. But those products are not highly valuable. Well, if we are able to export to EU, then you will have to catch less for a better price. Major challenge, like I said, is uh, is to, with SPS especially, we had the HACCP, we, we, we were introduced to this, we are now into it. We have our HACCP uh, personnel and, uh, that monitors that. Now SPS is going to be an even bigger challenge.
at the same time, because of our experience back there with ASAP, we might be able now to ooze into it. I don't think it's ooze, but we're trying. <laughs> So, for terraform countries to improve food handling and safety practices, international law expert Chris Headley is suggesting the region set up effective structures for managing the food processing that are also legally binding. And he says as the region moves to put food safety policies and government mechanisms in place, it can identify ways in which funding requests can be coordinated to help governments, fish processors, and monitoring facilities. We'll also look at how it can be more efficiently organized. So, so rather than trying to set up a, a laboratory or a, um, laboratory services in every country, which for some countries, this is going to be completely impractical. The smaller countries, it's, it's completely impractical. Looking at how they might be coordinated at a re regional level. So, so we can take some steps towards addressing that challenge, but I think other components of the, the project further down the line and, and other things that perhaps need to take place outside of the project will, will ultimately have to address that challenge. Headley says compliance with international standards may call for funding to help carry foreign nations put those new regulatory standards into effect. Okay.